Inflation has really been ramping up. And now it's a little bit concerning because you have a lot of people that are losing the unemployment benefits because states are stopping the unemployment extra benefits. And so now people are going to be making less money while the price of things keep going up. What's up, everybody? I am Just Pretty Singh from the MinorityMindset.com, where money minds really think rich. Ever since the first stimulus program was passed back in 2020, we started talking about inflation and how this free money can cause the price of things to go up because as more money is printed, the value of our dollars get diluted, which makes the price of things go up. Well, here we are now in a very high inflationary environment where the price of everything keeps going up. Now, if you ask the Federal Reserve Bank or the government, they'll tell you that the inflation is really nothing serious. But if you go to the grocery store now, it's going to cost you two times more to buy your groceries today than it did a year ago. Not to mention the fact that if you want to go out and buy a home or rent a home or buy a car or really buy anything, it's going to cost you a whole lot more now than it did just a year ago. Now, of course, the price of everything rising isn't just inflation. I mean, you have some supply chain issues out there as well. You saw that happened with computer chips because lots of people started buying video games during the pandemic and then car companies couldn't get a hold of chips so they weren't able to make cars and you also saw it in the housing market because lumber prices started skyrocketing and when that happened people started hoarding lumber and buying these lumber futures because they thought that the lumber prices would never come down and then lumber prices crashed so what has really gone up in price well if you go to the grocery store it is according to this article gas bacon cigarettes whole milk whiskey and beer those are some of the things the common items that have been going up the most in price now the next natural question is why are things getting so expensive this article does a good job explaining that but before we get into that i need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below and if you haven't already join our brand new free discord server where you can chat with other minority mindset thinkers we call this server the guac talk server because as we all know guacamole is a symbol of wealth so if you want to join the guac talk server talk about money management stuff talk about the stock market, talk about real estate, talk about cryptocurrency, talk about inflation, and all things building wealth, I got the link to how you can join our free community in the description below. So NPR put out this article titled, Inflation is Surging, the price of a Toyota pickup truck help explains why. So let's take a look at some Toyota pickup trucks. It talks about this guy, his name is John McConnell, who wants to buy a Toyota Tacoma. And what he says is he's been driving his Nissan Altima for a couple years, and now he wants to get a brand new pickup truck, but the issue is it is now much more expensive. He says it's priced several thousand dollars above the sticker price, but he still wants to buy it, even though it's way more than what it would have cost just a little while ago. The reason why he's willing to pay this extra money for this pickup truck now is not because he's going through a midlife crisis, it's because he has an itch for this, and he's willing to pay a little bit more because he can and he has the money to do it. What he says is, quote, I can afford to. Very interesting. Let's get into this a little bit deeper. What he says is that a year after the pandemic, McConnell was itching to go camping because everybody wants to go out and start living life again after this pandemic. But according to him, he can't do that in his Nissan. So he needs a pickup truck to do that because apparently if you want to go camping, you have to have a pickup truck. There's no other way around that. And now we're in a situation where everybody wants to start living their lives again after this pandemic and the price of everything is way higher and you have to decide, are you willing to pay the higher price or not? And Mr. McConnell, like many other people, are saying yes. And the reason why so many things are priced higher is because according to this article, the supply chain snarls that have led to shortages in key components, such as computer chips for cars, like I talked about, which is why now the price of these cars are so much more. These car companies cannot get a hold of these parts and so because they cannot create more cars, they're charging more money for the cars that they do have. Now you can couple this supply chain issue with the fact that everybody wants to go out and start enjoying their lives again because for the last year or year and a half everybody has been cooped up in their home because of this pandemic and so now everyone's getting a vaccine, they're trying to go out and they're living their lives, things are going back to normal and so now you have this huge demand to buy things and enjoy life but you have the shortage of everything because you have these supply chain issues and on top of that you have a lot of people that aren't working or they don't want to work because they've been getting these unemployment benefits and so now you have a lot of companies that are struggling struggling to find labor to get work as the companies are getting smacked both ways because companies cannot find parts and even if they do have parts they cannot find the work to take these parts and make a product and so now companies are really struggling to create their products while at the same time everybody
everybody has cash in their pockets because a lot of people did not spend any money over the last year and a lot of people got money from the government whether it was through unemployment or stimulus and so people have extra cash in their pocket and that doesn't include the fact that a lot of people did cash out refinances over the last year year and a half because the equity in their homes skyrocketed so people pulled out the cash out of their homes and so people have more cash than ever and they want to spend this money and businesses are really struggling to provide the products and so you create this real kind of supply and demand issue where you have a huge demand low supply which is causing the price of everything to go up what Warren Buffett says is quote it just won't stop people have money in their pockets and because of that it is not a price sensitive economy right now in the least according to this article it has gotten to the point where if you want to go out and buy a used car right now it's going to cost you almost 30 percent more now than just one year ago now obviously this rising prices is going to be a lot harder on some people than others like you had a lot of frontline workers people who worked at stores nurses doctors people who didn't really get any time off and so they weren't benefited by all the unemployment money because they were working the entire time and maybe they got some stimulus checks or maybe not but you had a lot of people that worked through this pandemic that didn't really get the benefit of all the free money that other people did that didn't work throughout the entire pandemic and so it's kind of a weird system where it's like who is our system rewarding because if you weren't working you were getting a lot of free money from the government but if you were working you weren't getting that free money and now we're in a situation where the price of everything is way up here and so now if you already have a job you're locked in at a certain wage and you're not looking for a new job well now you're kind of stuck because your income is here and the price of everything else is way up here versus somebody else who try to game the system now i know this is kind of a general stereotype this doesn't apply to everybody but there were some people that game the system and so if you try to game the system and you're like well why should i go back to work when the government is giving me more money you're benefiting because now you got the government paying you. You're sitting at home playing Fortnite all day. And now if you go back to work, McDonald's is going to pay you $18 an hour plus a $500 signing bonus. I do have some good news though. Both the Biden administration and the Federal Reserve Bank say that this jump in inflation is likely just short lived. Some prices like hotel rooms are just getting back to normal. And after the huge loss during the pandemic, not everybody's trying to go back and enjoy their lives. And so you have this massive demand, which should hopefully normalize. At least that's what the government and the Federal Reserve Bank says, I do think that you're going to see some normalization over the next six months as people go back to work, as you start to see these government programs end, and you will start to see more normalization as people have to pay their expenses again. But it'll be interesting to see how that works because we have the price of everything way up here, and typically, companies are not very fast to bring the price of their products down, especially if people are paying the higher price. The part that I think is the most kind of funny is for the last year or so, I was joking about how inflation makes the price of an extra guac become more extra. Well, according to this article, that Chipotle is also raising their menu prices because they have to pay higher wages, which means their extra guac is now officially extra. Now the question is, what do you do that way you can come out of this whole financial situation a financial winner? Well, the first you got to do is you got to be financially educated. If you haven't already, you should read our free guide on money management and investing that walks you through the things you need to know about managing your money, having the financial education, and investing your money to build your wealth. This PDF is completely free when you sign up for our daily newsletter. So if you have not read this PDF yet, I got the link to how you can download this PDF and start building your financial education in the description below. The next thing is what do you do with your money? Because we are in a very weird situation where lots of people have money in the bank and it's gotten to the point where banks are trying to turn people away. They're telling people to stop banking with them because they don't know what to do with the money that they have in their accounts. The way banks work is if you have $100, you walk over to the bank and you deposit this $100 in the bank, the bank is going to give you a receipt that says that you deposit $100 into their account and now the bank is going to have $100. The bank is going to then take this $100, do some fun things with it called fractional reserve lending but I will kind of ignore that for the topic of this video but they're gonna take your hundred dollars essentially and they're gonna turn around and they're gonna lend it out to somebody else that way they can start earning interest on the money that you deposited so now the bank is gonna take this money they're gonna lend it out they're gonna charge four percent to twenty percent a year in interest depending on what they lend this money out as whether it's a mortgage or it's credit card loans and so now the bank is getting interest on the money that you deposited and they're gonna give you a teeny tiny bit of interest and what's interesting is banks are now telling companies to please not give them more money because they don't know what to do with this money because people and companies are depositing their money in the bank because lots of companies and lots of people are sitting on big piles of cash 
and they're not spending it. And so the banks are struggling because people are not borrowing enough money from the bank, which means banks are sitting on this cash. They don't have companies. They don't have businesses. They don't have people borrowing this money. And so banks don't know how to generate a return on this money because the way that banks make money is by lending money out. In this article, you have Matthew Ellis, who is the chief financial officer at Verizon talking. And he says that his company has been operating with a higher cash balance for about a year now. And there's been no decision as of yet when they're going to bring this cash balance down. Right now they have something like 10.2 billion dollars in cash and they don't know what to do with this cash because everybody is so uncertain about the future of our economy, especially in the short term. And so now because you have a lot of people and businesses putting cash in the bank, banks don't know what to do. What this article says is that high deposits usually are not a bad thing for banks as long as they can use the money to make loans. But bank lending has been slow because many companies prefer to borrow money from investors. And for banks, the total loans, the amount of money that they've been lending has totaled 61% of all deposits as of May 20. 26, 2021, which is down from 75% back in February of 2020. This is where things get really interesting because you have the chief financial officer of JP Morgan, Jennifer Pipezek, I think that's how you say it, uh, talking. And what she says is that, quote, raising capital against deposits and or turning away deposits are unnatural actions for banks and they cannot be good for the system in the long run, which means turning away money, trying to tell people to stop depositing money in the bank is not a good thing in the long run. And what she says and what the article says is that the banks have several kind of tricky ways to get people to not put their money in the bank. Now, what is one of the ways? Well, giving clients lower yields for additional deposits. What that means is that because banks have so much money sitting in their vault right now and they don't know what to do with it, they're going to pay you next to nothing in interest, which is what they're already doing because they have no way to actually invest their money and grow their money, which is one of the reasons why if you save your money in the bank right now, you are going to get next to nothing, 0% interest on your money. So this is now where you have to be a little bit smart and you have to ask yourself, what exactly is it that you're trying to do? If you're trying to build wealth and you don't want to overpay for things, well, then you got to have to kind of be a little bit patient because if this whole high inflationary period is transitory, if it's temporary, then maybe you want to just wait it out. If you want to get a new truck, you want to get a new car, maybe wait six months, a year, maybe 18 months and kind of see where things go. I mean, I personally was thinking about buying a pickup truck for myself, but I saw some of these prices and I'm like, yeah, I might just wait six months to see how things are before I go out and overpay for a pickup truck today. One of my friends bought a Corvette about 18 months ago and he just sold this Corvette with very little modifications on it for 20 $20,000 more than what he paid for it. And so he got to drive a Corvette for free and he made $20,000 by selling his Corvette a year and some months after buying it. And the crazy thing is his Corvette was only on sale for three days. People are fighting each other to buy all these things right now because everybody has cash in their pockets right now and they want to go out and spend this money. So on the consumer side of things, I'm trying to be as patient as possible. If I don't have to buy something big right now, like a pickup truck, I'm just going to wait a little while and see what happens. On the investor side of things, I'm still looking for deals. I'm still looking for more real estate deals and I have money going towards my stock portfolio every single week. Besides my passive investments, which is my money going into my portfolio every week, I'm looking for deals. So when I'm looking for real estate deals, I am not trying to bid with a whole bunch of other people trying to overpay for a home and I'm not trying to overpay for any company stocks right now. I am looking for deals. If I can find an undervalued deal, I will buy it. I'm not just looking away from the market saying, oh no, everything's so high, I'm going to wait for it to crash because, well, everybody says that and you have no idea when things are going to crash or how big the crash is going to be. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just looking for deals. In the real estate market, I'm looking for undervalued deals. I'm looking for beat up properties, whether they're physically distressed or financially distressed. And that's where I can come in and add value. And as long as this property is profitable in the cash flow, I will buy it. Same in the stock market. If I can find a good undervalued company, I will put money into it. And so when I'm looking to invest my money, I'm looking for deals. I'm being picky right now. This is not the market to just go in and just throw your money blindly. This is a good market for you to be picky, do your education and make smart investments. Now I can't predict the future, but what I can do is be smart with my money so I don't overpay and I only buy things that I can afford. This is a better time than ever to be paying attention to what's going on around you because now as people lose their unemployment benefits and as people start paying their mortgages again, and as you start to see people start paying their student loans again, as all these forbearance programs end, you're going to see people who have higher expenses, lower incomes. So you're going to see more people entering the workforce. And this is going to change the dynamic of our economy. Now, this is not going to happen overnight, but you're going to start to see things change over the next six months to year. 
as you start to see our economy shift and enter the next phase of our recovery. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on passive income that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, download our free money management PDF. And as always, keep hustling. You have to deal with tenants. If you're investing in real estate, you're gonna have tenants that slip and fall while they're taking a shower, and then they're gonna sue you because they will say that the bathtub was too slippery when it was wet. 